Hello, and welcome to the MedEdits YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be discussing gap years before medical school. Should you take one or should you not? Let's get started now. My name is Dr. Jessica Friedman. I am a physician and former faculty member at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I am also the author of several top-selling books on Amazon about the medical admissions process, and I am the chair and founder of Med Edits Medical Admissions. We've been helping students get into medical school for more than 15 years. So today I will discuss overall trends and data, both those reported by the Association of American Medical Colleges, as well as those trends that we see here at MedEdits. I will talk about some practical concerns that you might want to consider as you decide to take a gap year. I will also talk about who should take a gap year, who might benefit, and what those gap year options could look like for you. So let's first review some data that is offered by the Association of American Medical Colleges, or the AAMC. Now, when reviewing this data, it is important to understand that in 2018, the AAMC stopped reporting data for the average age of medical school matriculants. So the last data that we have from the AMC on that specific number is from 2018. And the average age at that time of medical school matriculants was 24. So the data that we do now have is the data that is offered from the medical student questionnaire, which is given to medical school matriculants. Every year, this is self-reported data. And in 2019, 34.5% of medical school matriculants had, um, had less than one year elapsed since they graduated from college. The bigger number was 43.9% of medical school matriculants had one to two years elapsed since college, and 21.3% um, had three to five years that had elapsed since college. So 65% of medical school matriculants in 2019 had taken at least one gap year, which is a really significant number. So if you don't take a gap year, you are actually now in the minority among medical school matriculants. Now I'm going to look at some med edits data and give you some ideas of our thoughts on taking gap years. Now, the first thing that you really should understand is that there is no AMC gap year or age cohort data as there are is for other data points. And what do I mean by that? So for example, when students from certain demographic groups are reviewed by admissions committees, they are looked at within a certain cohort for that ethnic group, for example. Whereas students who have taken gap years are considered alongside medical school applicants who have not taken gap years. So in my opinion, it would be great if those students were divided into two different cohorts, because I personally think it is incredibly impressive when students are able to fulfill all of their requirements within four years and still go to medical school, you know, immediately following college. But until those cohorts are separated, um, you know, students who have not taken gap years are going to be compared alongside students who have much more real world experience. And the other way that this manifests is not only do those students who have real world experience have more to write about in their applications, but they also present themselves very differently during medical school interviews. They are often much more mature. They're more sophisticated in their thinking. Um, they, um, they have more to talk about and they have just more life experience that adds more depth to their candidacies overall. So this is why many students really can benefit from having additional life experience, which will just automatically make them more interesting and competitive applicants. We're going to briefly discuss some practical concerns that I often actually get from parents. Um, a question I often get, will time away from school get my child off track? And we never find this to be an issue. You know, students are not taking time away from formal academics uh, to go on vacation and to sit on, you know, on a beach. You know, medical school applicants are very focused, very driven. And in fact, the time away can actually really make them come back much more motivated for the classroom when they start medical school. 
The other question I get is, will I be the oldest in my class? And the answer to that is clearly no. Um, the most recent data, as I mentioned before, is that medical school matric matriculants are 24, um, and that age will, we think, continue to increase as more and more students continue to get, take gap years. So in fact, taking um, not taking a gap year might make you one of the youngest in your class. And then the other question that sometimes we receive is, will my child be at a disadvantage if they take a gap year? And the answer is no. They, in fact, they might clearly be at an advantage because that extra time will allow them to either enhance their academics or to obtain additional experiences that uh, might further enhance their candidacy. And I encourage you to read the article um, and listen to the video about extracurricular activities, which we will link below, where I discuss the um, optimal hours that students should have have in a variety of activities in order to be successful in the medical school admissions process. For many students, deciding to take a gap year is really a very practical decision. Um, you know, studying for and taking your MCAT, doing well in your classes, having some fun and going to some football or soccer games, doing research, getting clinical exposure, and accomplishing everything else that you need to accomplish in order to be a competitive medical school applicant is frankly impossible for many students, which is why most students um, just feel more comfortable and are less stressed by taking at least one gap year. So now let's talk about who should take a gap year or two. And the answer really is just about anyone. And the questions that you need to ask yourself are, could you benefit from academic enhancement or additional academic work? Could you benefit from more clinical exposure, research, or other scholarly endeavors? And do you have a specific interest or do you simply need more time to study and to fit everything in? So what should you do during your gap year? In deciding this, I want you to ask yourself two questions. What are your weaknesses, if you have any? And how do you want to enhance your candidacy? And in what are you most interested? Do you have gaps in your experiences? Or are there certain interests that you have that you want to pursue on a deeper level. Again, I encourage you to watch the video about extracurricular activities so you can get an idea of what the most competitive applicants have with regards to the number of hours in each type of experience. So let's discuss the major categories that gap year experiences typically fall under. And the first type of experience is some type of academic work. Now, I'm going to first talk about special master's programs. Um, special master's programs are specifically designed for medical school applicants who are in need of academic enhancement. These programs are becoming increasingly popular and are very competitive. Drexel, one of the most popular programs, receives 500 to 700 applications for 40 seats. Georgetown, which is a very well-known special master's program, um, has 85% of their students are ultimately accepted to medical school. Now, when applying to special master's programs, you need to keep in mind that many of them require or request that you have an MCAT. Um, they are also very competitive programs, and the deadlines for um, the applications are in May. So if this is something in which you are interested because you need to demonstrate that you are capable of managing a rigorous scientifically-based curriculum based on you know, a lower performance as an undergraduate, a special master's program could really be a great option for you. Another academic option would be to do a master's program in a specific discipline, such as public health, global health, nutrition. Keep in mind that you really should be doing these types of master's programs only if you have a demonstrated interest in the specific discipline you are pursuing. It would seem a bit disingenuous, for example, to pursue a master's in public health if you have zero demonstrated interest in that niche. Um, it's also important to understand that typically masters in specific disciplines may not bump your BCPM GPA, your biochem physics math GPA, as much as a special master's program would. And that is typically where most students who need academic enhancement need to bump the GPA. Um, now let's talk just very briefly about post-baccalaureate programs. Post-baccalaureate programs 
um, are designed specifically for career changers, for students who have not yet taken the medical school prerequisites. So uh, the term post-baccalaureate program and special master's program cannot be used interchangeably. Um, these two types of programs are designed for two very different types of students and applicants. Now let's discuss some non-academic options for a gap year um, or for gap years. And two of the most popular and beneficial ways to spend your time are through research or through clinical work or some combination of the two. And this research can be in basic science work, it can be clinical work, um, or it can be in a specific discipline such as public health. Uh, some students may continue to work with professors or scientists um, on projects that they've been involved with as undergraduates, while other students may get involved with new projects and take on new opportunities specifically for a gap year or two. Um, certainly, we consider research to be a prerequisite for any competitive medical school applicant. So if this is a place where maybe your candidacy is deficient, certainly a gap year, it would be a time to gain that, um, that experience. Another way that many students spend their time during a gap year or two is through clinical work. And medical schools really value practical work in a clinical arena, such as via scribing, working as an EMT, or working as a medical assistant. Um, and there really is no better way to get practical experience working with patients in a healthcare setting than there is through those venues. Finally, some students might opt to do service or community work um, or teaching during a gap year. And this type of service or community work can take many different forms. Um, some students have also done things like Teach for America successfully, and many students will do some sort of community service work on the side in addition to whatever primary activity they are participating in. And finally, the gap year is certainly a wonderful time to spend preparing and taking your MCAT, whether you are doing that for the first time or the second time and trying to improve upon um, a score that you earned as an undergraduate. Keep in mind that the vast majority of students will do multiple things during their gap year. So it isn't as if the gap year is dominated by one single activity. Um, you may have one primary activity that takes the majority of your time, but then most students will supplement that, um, that primary activity activity with other experiences to further enhance their candidacies during their time away from formal academics. In closing, gap years can certainly benefit all medical school applicants, but they are not absolutely necessary for every applicant. We have worked with many successful medical school applicants who apply at the end of junior year of college, and we have also worked with many applicants who take a gap year or two or three. Regardless, you want to use any gap time that you have to address your red flags, fill in gaps in your experiences, study for the MCAT, or explore or establish a niche interest that will help to distinguish you. If you liked this video, please like it below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell your friends to subscribe. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Go pick up a book or two on Amazon and certainly visit our website at www.mededits.com. I wish you the best of luck as you apply to medical school.